ಸಸ್ತಸಾಮ್ಯಂ ತುಃಖತರು ಕಿಪ್ಯಸಿ ಸ್ವರ್ಗ ಜಿತ್ವಾಕ್ಷ್ಯಸೆ ಮಹಿ ತಸ್ಮಕೇಯ ಯುಧ್ಧಾಯ ಸುಖದುಖೆ ಸಮೀಕೃತ್ವೌ ಜಯ ಜಯ ತುಧ್ಯಸ್ವ ಸಾಖ್ಯೇ ಮಾಣು ಬುಧ್ಯಾ ಪಾರ್ಥ ಕರ್ಮಬಂಧ ಬುಕ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಓವರ್ ದೇರ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಪಿಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಆನ್ ದ ವೇ ಎಂಟರಿಂಗ್ ದ ಬುಕ್ ಎಂಟರಿಂಗ್ ದ ಡೋರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಮ್ ನಿ ಆತ್ಮ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಗಿವನ್ from the standpoint of that which is called paramarthikam and from the standpoint of vyavaharikam as well notice there are no definitions of what is paramarthika what is vyavaharika as per my morning promise so it has been given everything has been given paramarthataya given you know vyavaharikataya also give it. so we have the knowledge of the atma what is this atma what is this i and from the standpoint of the absolute what is this i that alone which is which is without a second which does not have you know any limitations which is whole which is you which is true which is everything which out of which the universe rises as it were by whose presence the universe is sustained and into which the jagat universe resolves this is what is the atma it is you it is unassailable it does not get sad it does not get happy for that matter also why it's nature it is the nature it is its own nature it does not become happy or become sad it is what it is and it is without sorrow so therefore it is without limitations therefore it is called ananda because what i want to be is ananda and my classification of happiness is is for me to be happy regardless of time space or object that is my definition my definition of happiness is actually limitations yeah, free of limitations and so this is really what every person's definition of happiness is that's why satyam gnanam anantam ananta which means limitless is translated into sat chit ananda from the standpoint of the human pursuit it's the same thing and so therefore we have here you know the the definition the the knowledge of the atma seen from the absolute standpoint which is not a point of view ah therefore there cannot be any contentions when can there be contentions when there are numerous parallel equally valid points of view then you can say no 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 it's like friends talking no let's go see this movie no 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 that one got a better review no 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 this one is more fun no forget the movie let's uh, go out to dinner no let's not let's go out to have coffee instead this is all the parallel um pursuits which have equal satta equal reality because each one is possible to do and 
But with Atma, there are no parallel contentions. But what about if somebody says Atma is not whole? That argument is full of holes. Because you cannot disprove this limitlessness. You can prove it. Why? Because it requires no proof really. It's you. Do you require proof? No. no. You can prove it. You can say this is the nature of the one who doesn't require proof. No, I, I refuse to believe that. Well, it's not a matter for belief. It's a matter for understanding. It's a matter for understanding why you cannot see that and why you are having trouble accepting this reality. That is what you need to understand. No, I refuse to understand. Okay, Atma doesn't have any kind of a pressure to, to give you knowledge. It says, all right. I will be as though ignorant. No problem. <laughs> what is lost? Nothing is lost. So that is that is the the that being the case. There is there are no parallel realities or interpretations of the Atma, even though we have the so-called systems of philosophy. Vedanta is not a system of philosophy on a par with other systems. No. It doesn't have any problem with any of the systems. This is what the last, uh, you know, Vaitatya uh, Prakarana, uh, before the Alata Shanti, Alata Shanti, Alata Shanti Prakarana of the Mandukya Karika. Mandukya Karika was written by Adi Shankara's Grand Guru. Yeah, Guru's Guru. Gaudapada Acharya and he gave this you know gave this commentary in verse called Karika on the Mandukya Upanishad and then he says at the beginning of the last section he says our work is done why because we have quote unquote established the Atma that doesn't need to be established being self effulgent we don't have to establish it and then also we don't have to prove it as different and distinct from the other wrong philosophies. Atma is a spark, Atma is going to the park, Atma is a little splinter, Atma is a piece of wood, Atma is Jada, Atma is, you know, Chetana, Atma is sometimes Jada, sometimes Chetana, you know. Atma is little inert and sometimes also alive. You know, Atma is this, Atma is that, Atma is green, Atma is blue, Atma is, has, has got a lot of dharma's attributes. Oh, Atma gets unclean. This is Jainism. Atma has to be clean. Yeah. So for metal polish, there is Mr. Metal. And so for Atma, there is Mr. Atma. That's what, you know. <laughs> so you can get it. Ah, then you just keep rubbing and scrubbing. And what is this? So there is, you know, so Gaudapada Acharya says that, you know, we don't have to disprove these wrong philosophies. It's a total, it's a colossal waste of time. Then what do we have to do? We just have to stand back and watch them destroy one another. Let them destroy one another. Why should we bother? And so, very master stroke. So he posits the the contentions of one which are pulled down by the contentions of the other. And so they get tired of fighting one another and Vedanta says, you know, we accommodate everyone and we transcend them also. Not that those people are wrong, you know, they're not completely wrong. Just as the blind people, each one is not wrong to say that the elephant is nothing but a bada fan. He's not wrong because he was standing next to a ear, a ear. And the other fellow standing at the tail also is not wrong in saying that there is a big fly whisk. The one that's standing near the trunk is also not wrong in saying that it is a big hand. It even lifted me up. And neither is the one wrong 
that is standing and hugging the leg and saying what a solid pillar this is you know feeling it up and down and lastly the fellow that is by the side of the elephant and touching the whole body and saying the elephant is like a wall is also not wrong it's only that they have done what we talked about yesterday not to do mistaken the point of view for the view this is what is the problem with the so called five systems of philosophy so that's why vedanta can never be put on a par with them even though they will they will try that all the time because vedanta is that which is not giving a part is not giving a point of view just talking about you who is the view it accommodates all other points and it's not opposed to the points but it says you are not completely right because there's more to this than what meets the eye this is what it is so that's why we take this knowledge very seriously and so in keeping with the tradition the knowledge was given first to arjuna especially from verses 11 to 16 little 18 maybe uh, we have talked about the the divisions it was all given completely paramarthika knowledge knowledge of the atma as it is and then later on after you know giving this knowledge arjuna must have looked unconvinced and for good measure bhagavan also talks of the atma from the empirical standpoint and what is this atma atma means i what is this i the one who has body mind senses a sense of doership sense of experience searchship confusion about what to do what not to do confusion about where to go where not to go the in fact the person is just a walking talking confused fellow so from the standpoint of the vyavaharika and the pratibhasika you know pratibhasika means a self generated reality of projections raga dvesha etc and so from that standpoint those standpoints also bhagavan brings in this very important concept of swadharma what is there for you to do and why is this important because if you don't do what don't do what you're supposed to do you will naturally do what you should not be doing and be in a terrible state therefore it is given that you know the these next the, these verses are that we have just finished studying have described the atma from the standpoint of the individual's relationship with the flow called the jagat the jagat is not a static thing it's moving and you are dancing in relation to it it is moving constantly there are shifting relationships shifting uh, you know things objects people oh, everything is in a flux you don't have the privilege to be given some kind of warning that oh on such and such a day somebody is going to tell you something that you don't want to do that you don't like to do oh what is it they're going to say they're going to say this 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 they're going to ask you to go here and do something oh i better start saying no now life doesn't come like that suddenly one is called upon to do something suddenly one is called upon to give up something and invariably what one is called upon to do one does not want to do and invariably what one is called up upon to give up does not want to give up so now we are going from the objective swadharma like there are certain things for one to do why so that one does not go into the subjective aspect of this swadharma based on raga dveshas that's not really swadharma is it no based on raga dvesha what kind of swadharma is there you know there's hardly dharma because raga dvesha takes take you away from what is correct and so there is no swadharma at all and so now he 
he says that from the standpoint of the individual connection to the universe, to the manifest jagat, and the individual's connection to the collective, you have certain responsibilities because you were not born in a vacuum. You know, your father worked hard, your mother had difficulty, and uh, she sacrificed a lot, and your brothers and sisters, and then the whole, your particular, you know, manifestation of your universe has contributed to making you a successful individual in society. Correct? And Swadharma is part of giving back to that. Is fulfilling your responsibility to all the people who have helped in a certain way. That's why it is given what is Nitya Karma, what is to be done, etc. You know, this is part of my contribution to the society that has brought me into being and has helped me and has not left me, you know, adrift. You know, the, the mother did not abandon me. Even if she did, some other mother took me in and, you know, raised me. So, therefore, this is taken very seriously and this is going to be elaborated in chapter 3. Evam pravartitam chakram na anuvartayati iha yaha aghayuhu indriyaramaha mogham partha sajivati. Verse number 13 or 14 in uh, uh, chapter 3. Evam pravartitam chakram. The, here is the flow Arjuna. This is the flow. Na anuvartayati, the one who goes out of the flow, steps out of the flow due to the force of what? Ragatvesha is what else? Yeah. R and D in Sanskrit and uh, <laughs> Gita class does not stand for research and development. <laughs> Raga and Vesha. Because of that, I say I am not going to play. Uh, yesterday we were talking about this. I am going to take my ball and go home because I don't like the rules of the game. I am going to go away because I don't, I don't like this. I don't like what is happening. So when the going gets tough, what happens to the tough people? They get going. This is what it is. And you know, Bhagavan makes it very clear later on in the next chapter that the person who flouts dharma in such a way, dharma here means swadharma, what one is supposed to do, what one's place in society is, how to give back on a day-to-day -day basis for whatever I have, whatever has nourished me, the elements, the rivers, the, the produce, everything is nourishing me. You know, what can I do to give back? And how can I contribute instead of just saying la la, holding, holding? No. So, eva pravartitam chakram. In this manner, that which is flowing, this cosmic flow, this, this cycle, chakram, cycle, na anuvartayati, the one who does not follow, iha, in this life, embodied, that person is called some four syllabic words by Bhagavan. Aghayuhu. See? Aghayu. Sanskrit curse words by Bhagavan. Aghayuhu. Indriya Rama. Mogham. Sajivati. Aghayu means Ayu. Is a life. Lifespan here. The lifespan is full of agham. Agham means it's a life is itself full of papa. Life is equal to papa for whom? Aghayuhu, that person. Indriya Ramaha, the one who is totally given to the delight gained from sporting with or indulging in the demands of the sense organs. Indriya Ramaha. Mogham partha sajivati. Mogham means that person leads a useless life. Each time that fellow puts a step on Mother Earth, Mother Earth groans, Oh no, so heavy you are. <laughs> Why are you troubling me? This is what she, he's a burden to Mother Earth. He's a burden to fellow beings, burden to his, her own family, burden to society. Big burden, you know. This is what it is. So, 
on the relative level of the individual, the community, the society, the universe, there are certain responsibilities to keep dharma in place. Otherwise, ragadvesha attack happens and every there is chaos and anarchy. So, every society has its way. This is not just because of the Vaidika society. Every society there is Swadharma. Swadharma is your occupation at work. Swadharma is the role that you play at home or the many roles. You know, husband, wife, son, daughter, mother, father, whatever it is. Student, you know, teacher, whatever the roles are, you play those roles. And you don't have a choice to play them. If you don't play them, it is a wrong situation because that means the Ragadveshas have taken over. So you understand the connection, the deep connection between the role playing as Swadharma and the suffocation, the suspension and the slow snuffing out of the Ragadveshas. Do you see the connection? Yeah. That's what it is. So how are the Ragadveshas best overridden? They are best overridden by not even acknowledging them. Just like a demanding baby. You know, the demanding child. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? I, I want candy. I want candy. Already mother has said, you know, when we go to that place, we'll get candy. I want candy. 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 Candy, 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 candy. What will the parents do in the car? Car. We have to have the car. Because it's a confined place. And the short of throwing this fellow out along with the car seat, they don't. But they cannot do anything. <laughs> so what, what will they do? You know, in an enclosed space, they are going at 50 miles an hour and this thing is keeping on screaming, candy, 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 chocolate, candy, chocolate, candy, 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 water, water, are we there yet? Are we there yet? When, when, when? What are you going to do? What do the parents do? You know, ignore. This is what it is. They turn up the music. <laughs> if all else fails, they'll try to drown out this candy candy drone. They will try to drown it out by turning up the music and then ignoring. After a while, the child sees that this attention getting mechanism is not working. Let me be quiet. Why? So that I can think up a better attention getting <laughs> mechanism. <laughs> so, in between that and then the next attention getting, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> now! <laughs> so, the next attention, but you just went. No, I have to go again. Now! So this is more effective because then the rest stop they have to find and then at the rest stop in addition to bathroom what is there? Candy. Ah. So but in between two, these two mechanisms there is a lull, correct? Ah. That baby is just a inner baby. Imagine now this baby to be a big mutant ninja inner baby full of all kinds of weapons that which it keeps throwing because it wants attention. These are the weapons. First, first it will say, Swadharma, no, no, no Swadharma. Don't like, don't want, having a tantrum. Now, don't want, seva, don't want, dharma, don't want, Swadharma. Tantrum, now. And then the ahankara is, you know, ahankara which lacks compassion in other places is, is wrongly compassionate here. <laughs> In other places, you know, there is no compassion, even if you wring it out. You know, half a drop eeks out with great difficulty. There is no compassion at all. Where did all the compassion go? It was used up on the Ragatveshas. Yeah. And meanwhile, being watered by the endless, you know, supply of compassion of the Ahankara, the Ragatveshas thrive. They just proliferate. They invite their friends also. <laughs> and they'll invite your friends, Rakadvesha, also. Come, come. Come, party. It's all paid for. Come. Let's wreak havoc. This is what the Bhagavad Gita is famous for. Bhagavad Gita is a bridge between these two levels. What are the? Uh, what is the first level? Paramarthika. 
Paramarsika, where the absolute truth is absolutely said, there is no argument, there is no embellishment and there is really nothing more to say because you are the whole what more is there, there is no argument, there is nothing to defend, there is no, nobody to offend, this is it. <coughs> and then at the Vyabhaharika level, you know, suddenly there are, you know, that doesn't matter at all, that seems to not matter. That the Atma is whole, who cares? Here I have to go to work, here I have to do this, here I have to do that, I have so many duties. Who cares if Atma is whole or half or quartered or slaughtered? I don't care. Right now, I am faced with all these responsibilities. All right, do the responsibilities, forget about Atma. But then I drown in the sorrow, oh, connected to the responsibilities. All right, study the Atma, but I don't understand. What is the connection between that and this? So, this is a very beautiful bridge between the level of Swadharva, which of course has the objective aspect of the Vyavaharika and the subjective aspect of my own Pratibhasikam, my own projections, fears based on our uh, R&D, Ragadveshas. This is what needs to be bridged. So, the Swadharma has to be bridged with this Paramarthika on the, the level of the Vyavaharikam. The, the Vyavaharika has to be as it were bridged. Vyavaharika, the empirical reality is not opposed to Paramarthika, the absolute. The empirical being just an offshoot as it were of the absolute, a dependent offshoot and as though offshoot, the, the, the absolute is not opposed to the empirical. But not knowing this fact, I take the empirical to be absolute. This is my problem. Therefore, we need some things on the level of the empirical itself to manage these ragadveshas and to get to the place of preparing oneself to see what was given in verses 11 onwards up till now, which, you know, would have been which would have been much easily assimilated had the preparation been there. This is what uh, um, Krishna will tell later to Arjuna. Very easy to assimilate if the preparation is there. So now I am looking at a body of knowledge which is the truth of myself and I am seeing the disconnect between my life in the everyday and this body of knowledge which, which says, which states that I am perfect, which states that I am whole, which states that there is nothing other than me, which states that I am not subject to Papa Punya, which states that I am magnificent, I am Purna, limitless and my everyday life which is full of holes, not whole, neither whole nor holy, full of holes and then what? You know, where I feel guilt and hurt all the time, where I feel sorrow and fear all the time. This is what is called due to my own projections and my inability to resolve those projections and the causes thereof which are Raga and Dvesha and my inability to understand what is real and what is as though. My confusion, my confusing the as though for the real. When I take mithya to be satyam, this is what happens. And so, this is what the Bhagavad Gita is famous for. An elaborate Ragad Dvesha psychology. The psychology of likes and dislikes never, you know, first, I mean, this is, uh, Lord Krishna is a famous, you know, more famous than any psychologist, Jung, Freud and all are just, you know, small Yadavas. This is the real one. This is the real thing. And here he goes into the Ragad Dvesha psychology in a very beautiful way. And it's the, the footprint is already there in the verses that we are about to study. And, it's, and the entire Gita is an elaboration of the Ragad Dvesha psychology. In ancient India, at the time that Adi Shankara was writing, it appears from reading his Bhashya, a commentary, that, that, that this was an issue even then. So we are in good company. 
instead of feeling bad that ragadveshas are there you know we can we can take heart that these are long standing existential problems in the sense that if if i don't know the truth of my own existence these problems will be there because i take myself to be what i'm not it's a heavy price to pay to nurture these ragas and dveshas and put miracle grow on them and then what happens they take over they to take over what is the antakarna the very place where the knowledge is internalized so therefore the antakarna must be free of this strong hold of ragadveshas and so therefore this ragadvesha psychology how does it proliferate you know these are the questions that are of note because they, they this is what the the bhagavad gita is going to be concerning itself with how do ragadveshas proliferate where did they come from <laughs> where did they come from why do i have them you know why do i have them that in fact should be the first question question number 2 how do they multiply you know and then question number 3 how do i get rid of them do i really get rid of them because if i say i want to get rid of the raga i want to get rid of raga i want to get rid of raga then i have a new raga what is the new raga i want to get rid of raga then if you say i don't want dvesha i don't want dvesha i hate dvesha i hate dvesha we have a new dvesha what is that i hate dvesha ah. so the, so do i get rid of them no oh great so i keep all going after them no i learn to juggle them manage them snuff out a few put a few to sleep suspend a few others in the air that's why i said juggle suspend them and whatever i do i manage the i ahankara manages to come out free of their hold this is what the whole thing is where did they come from bhagavan who bhagavan gave ragat vishas what's wrong with this bhagavan <laughs> Why did Ishvara give ragadveshas? Ishvara didn't get give ragadveshas. Ishvara just abides in the form of desire. Wherever there are desires, the, it is not without the presence of Ishvara. Now this is a terrible setup. So reduce ragadveshas means reduce Ishvara. This is not good. There is something funny about this. wherever there is desire there is presence of ishvara wherever there is anything there is presence of ishvara but desire the presence of desire is bhagavan that i come under the spell of these desires that is not bhagavan it is gabhavan what is gabhavan a new sanskrit word <laughs> Oh, that's just a joke that is bhagavan backwards that's all it is <laughs> so there's a new desire each time there's a new desire it's the i i am in touch with the presence of bhagavan that i succumb to it is the wrong use of my free will that there are ragadveshas in every head is a universal fact but that i have the freedom to not come under their spell is also my privilege this is what the gita says lord krishna says kamos me bharatarshabh oh arjuna i am in the form of kama no oh, really yes that's great i can have lots of kama well the fine print is there what is the fine print धर्म अविरुद्ध भूतेशु इन ऑल बीइंग्स आई एम दैट डिजायर दैट डज नॉट गो अगेंस्ट धर्म व्हाट काइंड ऑफ धर्म सामान्य धर्म विशेष धर्म स्वधर्म फिनिश्ड व्हाट मोर इज टू से बट दैट्स रियली बोरिंग 
It's a boring manifestation of Bhagavan. That means when I'm doing the right things and I'm having the desire for the right things, then there is Bhagavan. And then as soon as I desire anything illegal, immoral or too fattening, then the Bhagavan goes away. Yes. But this is very boring ma manifestation of Bhagavan. Who is saying that? The two-year-old, <laughs> inner two-year-old. It's not the adult saying that. And same thing, sarvesham buddhau ragadveshav vyavasthitav. In every buddhi, a few ragadveshas can be found. Why few? A few thousand ragadveshas can be found. Oh, great! Again the fine print. Tayoho vasham na agachet. Don't come under their spell, Arjuna. Tau hi asya paripanthinau. They are your enemies not the one standing in front of you. These fellows, the inner enemies. So the whole Bhagavad Gita, even though it's a wartime teaching about conquest of enemies and the need for this war, which is a war of dharma, is also an allegory for conquering the inner enemies. Who are what? Agandvesha, who else? That's why the third chapter is going to close with a beautiful, you know, last verse. Jahi Shatrum Mahabaho Kama Rupam Durasadam Conquer the enemy in the form of desire. Proliferating Ragadveshas. That is the worst enemy. This is what is told. And so the Ragadvesha psychology is very, very uh, important. It's an important insight into the human condition, into why there is, even though there is ignorance and the knowledge is given on the platter, why it does not take root? Why does it not sprout? Why does it not flower? Why does it not come to a fruition? Because these Ragadveshas snuff out any possibility because the Ragadveshas don't allow there for the fertile ground for the knowledge to proliferate, for the knowledge to assimilate. And so even though from Adi Shankara's time we see that these Ragadveshas have a big presence even in those days because he comments on them and also in the Upanishads. Putra Pashu Adi Lakshana, you know, he says that that all the Ragadveshas in the form of uh, desire for Pashu, Putra, Loka, etc., all these things are there. Still, what, th there has been, you know, there is, I think we have devolved as far as Ragadveshas go in this generation, in this, in this time period. Because look at the lives of the ancestors, no matter where they lived, they woke up with the sun, because, you know, if the sun is shining on the face, you have to wake up. So they woke up with the sun and they knew in the winter only this much sunlight, in the summer this much sunlight, so in the summer more yajnas, in the winter fewer perhaps, we don't know. And then they would do whatever they needed to do. They had a certain life. It was with the seasons. They ate what they were able to grow. They had a life that was close to the earth. And then when the sun set, you know, what would, what would they do? Go to bed. That's all. No. There was no insomnia and not being able to sleep. And there was, uh, what is that? The, the, what is the late night parties were not there. Only Shivaratri. You know, <laughs> it was more a Jagarana, a Jagrati, because they would, they would stay up all night. And not party, chant, meditate be in, in a quiet, quiet time. It was worship. But otherwise there was not late night parties, there were not competing desires, there were not all these things that, you know, now we can stretch the day into forever because we have electricity. You can keep the house bright and uh, then, you know, you can uh, mimic all the things. You can extend all the things. So from from, uh, what is that, various forms of entertainment, video games, etc., etc. We, we have 
become technological experts in how to increase ragadveshas. That's all it is. That's where the technology is. They say convenience. Convenience for whom? Not for you. You know, not for this knowledge. For the ragadveshas. So all the innovations is about fulfilling their own or other people's ragadveshas. The technological progress is all about keeping the ragi and the dveshi, ragin, dveshin, one who is in raga and dvesha permanently, keeping them alive. So now we are in serious times and for that we need a serious understanding of how the ragadvesha psychology you know, operates. And there is no one better than Pujya Swamiji who has talked about this, commented about this at length. He has in fact made, his, made it his life's contribution, his life's work, if there is one thing. I mean many things you can point out. But as far as the knowledge goes, if there is one thing which has been one of the most valuable things for Vedanta, it is understanding this Raghudvesha psychology and explaining it in such a way that one cannot but get this understanding. So even though the commentary of Adi Shankara is just not very much here, he also is, you know, he also is a person of his times. So he is commenting on what his times are there and his times were much simpler ones. They were not all these competing desires and competing innovations that take one away from knowledge. Other than Putra and Pashu and Loka and Nittam, there was nothing else. <laughs> you know, only three, four things. <laughs> Putra, Pashu, Loka, Vittam, what else? Nothing else, you know. And then, so therefore, this is a, you know, this is, we are living under very complicated times. And even if we take up some spiritual, uh, what is it called? Uh, pursuit, even if we are, there also Raghadvesha has come into play. You know, somebody decided to take up meditation and informed me I am taking up meditation. I said, very good. First they went and got one bell. Ding! Tibetan bell. Along with a wooden thing that you hit. Or you can go some, some make a stirring <laughs> motion. What do you stir? I don't know. But anyhow, I have seen people do this in these interfaith conferences. Then they bought themselves a cushion to sit down. Okay, take care. Then a noise, uh, ear plugs, so that they don't hear anything else. So you put ear plugs. All right, fine. Then, oh, they read somewhere that you have to meditate wearing white. They never worn white. So they went and got themselves a, you know, white outfit, white fit. And then what? Then they got themselves the, what's it called, that uh, timer to meditate because they are going to work also. So how many things already? Yeah. Six. Six things. <laughs> yeah. Then they got, uh, along with the timer came the primer how to meditate. Do it yourself. DIY meditation techniques. They got the timer and then along with that the primer. Cliff notes on how to meditate. Then they said that uh, uh, I have a cushion to meditate. The bell also needs its own, its own cushion. Then they bought one small cushion for the bell. Don't ask why. And then what? No, that didn't come. That, that they didn't buy. There was something else I'm forgetting. One more thing was there. Forgotten what that was. And so like these seven or eight things, the whole paraphernalia came before taking up meditation. And then after purchasing everything, they were on to something new. <laughs> Sold it all off on eBay one by one. Unused, authentic, Tibetan bell. Cushion comes for free. <laughs> like this. So this is something which is uh, very interesting because even the spiritual pursuit is, is commercialized. Like yoga, let's not even go there. We need a mat. 
then you need a cat, you know, because the cat does better yoga than you see. So <laughs> look at the cat. Yeah, there you see on the wall there is cat yoga. <laughs> every, every month has a new cat yoga pose. So then you need a hat, then cat, mat, hat, rat. Then you need a particular kind of water bottle which is attached to the thing so that while doing <laughs> downward dog you can sip, sip uh, somewhere it comes. Then you need some other things there for the hands, the, the bands for the wrists to, to uh, for some injury thing. Then the same bands for the ankles. Yeah, belt. And then one brick. And then two bricks because this side also fellow cannot bend that side also. <laughs> the fellow cannot bend. He cannot bend, she cannot bend, period. You know? Yeah. All's well that bends well, you know? <laughs> No bends, you know, here. And then, uh, and then three, four cushions of various sizes. Because the seated positions, asanas, not a single thing they are able to do. Not a single thing. The leg, they cannot sit like this. The legs are like the wings of, uh, and, uh, you know, American Airlines. Going like this. <laughs> so underneath one leg, you need about 15 cushions, underneath the other at least 10. Yeah, this side little more flexible. Then there's all these things to this thing. By the time you take up the thing, then you get to so bored because you see, you just get put off. Because what is one doing here? Oh, and t-shirt, yeah. <laughs> there is a t-shirt, there is a t-shirt without the sleeves and for hot days and then that, you know, chudidars, what is that called? You know, chudidar, we call it chudidar, yeah. You know, that uh, leggings, yeah. They knew there was a name for it, leggings. And then suddenly we feel cold, then there is one, uh, you know, blanket, then there is one, uh, what is it called, some uh, sweatshirt, hood, you know, and then yogi tea, and you know, this <laughs> <laughs> because now I'm doing yoga, yeah. Is this yoga or bhoga? What is this, really? You know, and in India you go, and you know, they, they are, they don't, they don't even know. Now, of course, things have changed. But when I learned yoga, we didn't know what a mat was. On the floor we did, or on a, just a, you know, little bed sheet or some kind of a sheet. Oh, and then, oh, one more thing, the yoga prop. This, this 90 degree inverter. You just lie on it and you press the button and then it uh, it uh, makes you Trishanku. <laughs> it makes you Trishanku in 90 seconds or less. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to build up arm strength. If you don't have arm strength, don't worry. You just buy this inverter. $399, it will invert your bank account first, it will make it <laughs> ulta and then it will proceed to make you ulta, you know, you are hanging like a bat, but you know without, uh, at least the bat has to be respectable, respected because it is using its own strength to hang, uh, you know, in shirshasana, but here there is no strength needed because you strap yourself to this inverter and you press the button and uh, you go. <laughs> Expensive prop. And then all these health benefits. Oh, blood goes to the head and that's the, you know, the back stretches. Otherwise it's compressed because all the time you're sitting, sitting, sitting. And here it elongates. Kundalini goes up, comes down, does whatever it wants. This is what uh, even so-called spiritual pursuits have become grossly commercialized. Plus you need yoga tape because you need to know how to do it. It's not enough to go once a week at home also you want someone to keep on demonstrating. We become intellectually lazy because of ragadveshas. We become intellectually complacent because everything is readily available we become intellectually entitled. This is the, this entitlement is the greatest disease of the West. And you know, adhikari, when we say adhikaritvam, that's not entitlement, that's a qualification. Here we are talking of entitlement. 
anything one feels entitled to so one does not really put the effort needed because everything should come to me because i'm living in the richest country in the world i'm entitled to it why should i have to work this in intellectual laxity has been at the helm of i think it's the main thing that is responsible for the pro proliferation of the ragatvesha and so introducing this this whole issue of ragatveshas bhagavan krishna says gives him no choice arjuna was told from the standpoint of atma from the paramarthika standpoint you're not killing anyone nobody is dying atma can neither die nor be killed nor kill finished from the standpoint of swadharma this is a war of great bhadra bhadrata means it is a very auspicious war you are a kshatriya you have been given the rare gift of proving your mettle either way it pans out whether you win or whether you die or you win and die or die winning doesn't matter you will still it's a win win situation you will not be able to lose there is nothing to lose except your ragadveshas this is a new take on marx yeah so because the, those are the shackles the shackles are ragatveshas men and women of the world unite you have nothing to you lose but your chains and the whole world to conquer marx said and here what do we say yeah jeevas of the world unite is nothing jeevas of the jagat there is nothing to lose except the shackles of ragatveshas and the whole atma to conquer that is what is there to 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 discover as yourself it's an already gained gain whose discovery is being preempted by the presence of these stupid ragatveshas and so introducing that he says now you don't have a choice from both standpoints you, this war is justified this war is needed it's it's you know in fact this war will have a brand from the standpoint of paramarthika A, a statement that says no people were harmed in the making of this war because nobody was harmed <laughs> from the standpoint of atma no one died <laughs> you know they have all these uh, movies no animals were harmed in the making of this film so like this in the, in the making of kurukshetra war nobody came, died nobody was harmed from the standpoint of atma and from the standpoint of your own dharma what are you waiting for you know this is a wonderful war it's a dharmic war you have a lot to gain and nothing to lose except your ragatveshas first he says you have nothing to lose sukhinah kshatriya parth labhante yuddham idrisham this kind of uh, uh, you know yuddha is not gained by anyone this is this is an opportunity not to be lost and then he says this is a win win situation you have nothing to lose and it's uh, as though bhagwan amends himself and he says yes the only thing you have to lose is your ragatveshas so this one is is a injunction he he forces arjuna to get up from the chariot he says sukha dukhe sukha sukham cha dukham cha sukha dukhe te so sukham happiness dukham sorrow all relative same kritva make them into sama same because they are two same kritva having made them into that which is equal how to make sukha and dukha equal what is sukha e happiness what is dukha who sorrow how can they be made equal because they are based on what ragatveshas ah sukha dukhe you know these are opposites and they are also subjective what is sukha for one person is dukha for the other person that's what it is but so it is with married couples one turns on the fan the other one turns off the fan one opens the window the other one closes the window lives like a you know hermit you yeah, have one, one of them always wants fresh air even when it is snowing outside and so what to do 
This is subjective, correct? Yeah, and same thing, food tastes, if there is a family of four, each one likes separate things. And so the poor, you know, person who is going shopping has to really, you know, either bring a lot of things home or wonder how to do this, how to sneak in these things which they don't like. Maybe you bash up the vegetables they don't like, put them in the blender for good measure and then you put it on top of something else and then pretend you are not cooking them or whatever. You have to become very innovative. And so Sukha and Dukha are very subjective things. Somebody wants to sell a car, correct? So that selling is Sukha for them, not selling is Dukha for them. Another person wants to buy a car and buying is Sukha for them, not buying is Dukha for them. You see how opposite it is? So therefore, when you talk of Sukha, Dukha, especially together, you are not talking of Shanti, Swarupa, that kind of, you know, uh, what is that? Uh, the ultimate absolute shanti. Atyantiki shanti, we are not talking of. We are talking of apekshika shanti, apekshiki, meaning the relative shanti here is all the definition of relative sorrow and relative happiness is subjective. That, that definition. So therefore, he says samekritva, Having made them one and the same, meaning what? How to make them one and the same? Press the override button on the those that are causing the Sukha and the Dukha. Mr. R and Mr. D. Raga and Dvesha. But, 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 no buts. You mean there is more? Yes. I have to do this? Yes. Labha and Alabha. Labha, Labha. Sukha, Dukha being neutral, they go. Sukham, Sukhe, Sukhani. Dukham, Dukhe, Dukhani. Sukha, Dukhe, you know, like that. So, Sukha, Dukhe, dual. Raga and Dvesha, that's why I said Mr. Being masculine, you know, uh, uh, and Labha. And Alabha being masculine. Labha, Labha. Labha plus Alabha. Labha, Labha. Labha is gain. Alabha is what? Loss. So loss and gain make them into one. Cognitively. Meaning put aside your subjective nonsensical definition of what constitutes loss, what constitutes gain, what constitutes sorrow, what constitutes happiness. Put it aside. And then jaya and ajaya. Ajaya means what? Defeat, jaya, victory. So victory and defeat. But that is objective. How can victory and defeat be subjective? It is subjective because he said even Nakankshe Vijayam Krishna Rajyam Bhoga Sukhanicha Kino Rajye Nago Vinda Depressed Arjuna talking. Kim bhogai jivite nava kim. This is what he said. No, I, victory I don't want. Why don't you want victory? What is victory? See, already subjective is coming. Who asked you whether you want victory or not? Did you ask the people who you are protecting? What is victory for them? And what it means for them to not have Duryodhana as the ruler? Did you ask them? Who are living under his... Uh, you know, wrong dictatorship, horrible dictatorship. No, but I don't want this war. I don't want this victory. It's all about oneself. So here, that's why he puts jaya and ajaya. Because victory and defeat should be objective criteria. But here they are not. Because he is making what could be victory into defeat. He's already defeated before the victory. With such a defeative, uh, defeat, uh, defeated attitude. How can he have victory? And then what is defeat? He says defeat is killing your gurus, killing the elders. That is defeat for him. Yet, yet, this is not objective. This is subjective. So that's why he puts gain and loss, victory, defeat, happiness and sorrow. These are the subjective dyads 
which have been grouped into these three things based on your ragatveshas. Ragatveshas are making you decide. You are not thinking. You, the intellect, the thinking faculty is, you are under the grip of the ragatveshas. The ragatvesha has taken the buddhi hostage, gagged it, muffled it, bound it, Give it, give, given it some chloroform, put it out and the Ragadveshas are deciding what moves to make. When the Ragadveshas stand in for the buddhi and decide to think, oh my, because they are brainless. If they have a brain, they are attached to a brain of the two year old. That's all it is, they are brainless. And the, the decisions and the judgments they make are from the standpoint of the inner child. A truncated inner child that never quite grew up. But that's not you. That's not you at all. That's the unconscious. You are an adult. Oh, but I was, I, I'm an abandoned adult. Yeah, you know, for I, I'm a, I was a child of a neglect, neglected as a child adult. Yeah, but now you are an adult. They, they have all these uh, annual meetings. You know, what is that? Children of alcoholics. Children of divorced parents. Support group. Children of neglectful parents. Children of abusive parents. Children of normal parents. No one comes. <laughs> no one will go. So, <laughs> that's why they don't have that category. <clears throat> so, what does this show? This shows that there is that hurt there. I was abandoned at age two. That's why I need support. I need other people to understand how mean the parents were and what the, what all they did to me. I, I need people to understand and there is a certain kind of a uh, camaraderie about, you know, being with such kinds of people and, 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 and having a place to vent, which is all fine. But we are not talking of venting. Yeah. We are talking of spiritual growth. We are talking of not rehearsing the two-year-old, but reversing the two-year-old by integrating that fellow into the adult. So if Ragadvesh has captured the brain, the fort of the brain, then what happens? The decrees that are issued from the brain, you know, are all just so subjective and actually are inimical to the goals of the person. And inimical to Arjuna's goals is the wrong decision to not fight this war based on his stupid, you know, decision, Ragadveshas. So he says, Sukha Dukhe Samee Kritva. That Sama, the first time he uses the word, it's like an appetizer of Karma Yoga. Sukha Dukhe Sama means equanimity, Sama. Samee Kritva. Making them one and the same. Here there is an agency a deliberation, a decision, a proactiveness that is involved. Sukha Dukhe Same Kritva. Just as Labha and Alabha, Jaya and Ajaya Same Kritva. Tataha, thereafter, what? Make the decision. Vidyasva, get ready. Get ready. Already it was told. Krita Nishchaya, get ready to fight, decide to fight. And here, Yujyasva, prepare, join the war. Yuj to join. Yujyasva, make your body, mind, senses and the two-year-old also join the war. Tataha, yuddhaya yujyasva. No, I won't. What will happen? You will get papa. Na evam, if you don't do this in this manner, if you don't do as I am telling, go oh, sit in the corner. You know, Dritta <laughs> Phalam. This is what it is. And this is what how the children are uh, disciplined by the parents. If you don't know how to talk to your mother, the mother will say, go sit in your room until supper time. Then you can come out. If you don't listen to me, this is what you are going to do. No more treats for you. If you don't honor the time that you need to come home, when I tell you, you are grounded. This is, this is how to raise children, no other way. No other way. You have to show them the limits. 
And this is how to raise the inner children also. You have to show them the limits. And Bhagavan is not teaching Arjuna. He is talking directly to the inner child. When he says the last one, Na evam papam abhapshyasi. Sukha dukhe samay kritva. That was for Arjuna. Labha labhau jaya jaya. You be the person, you be the man that you are. And uh, override this subjectivity. Override the ragadveshas. Put them in a corner. Don't listen to them. That's the only way to override them. Stop listening to your ragat veshas. This is what it is. Because when you stop listening to your ragat veshas, you can listen to Vedanta. Shravanam can take place. But usually Shravanam has no effect. Why? Because one is doing Shravanam of ragat veshas. Ah, stop listening to the ragat veshas. Just say, you, you, oh, but there is a wonderful thing dangling there. You want that? Say, no, I don't want that. Stop bothering me. Oh, but I'm going to have a tantrum just now. Have it. I'm not going to listen. You have to be strong. And you have to repeatedly put it down. Repeatedly. Without self-judgment and without blaming it. You have to just say, I hear you, but this is not the time. This is not the place. This is not happening. This is not what is meant for me in my life. Moving on. You have to ignore it. You have to stop watering it so that it shrivels up and dies. Here, he is talking to Arjuna. But when he says... Na evam papa mavapsyasi, you will be sent to your room with a lot of papa. <laughs> he is, as it were, threatening the inner child. Na evam, if you don't do this in this manner that I have outlined, papa mavapsyasi, you will incur omissions and commissions. Omissions of doing the right thing and commissions of doing it half heartedly because he threatened to commit suicide by not uh, let the arrows come, you know. Let the arrows come. In the end of chapter 1 he said, Let all the arrows come. I will not retaliate. We will just sit there and be the sacrificial goat for the arrows of Kurukshetra. He said that. So if you have all those ideas and if you are going to take your ball and go home, a big aberration has happened in terms of dharma. Better heed this because at the level of dharma, at the level of cosmic flow, at the Vyavaharika, at the level of Swadharma, your own dharma and your own trajectory as the jiva, it's just very disturbed. And if you don't do this, you will reap horrid, horrid fruits, you know. More to be seen when the class is resumed. That was the last class for the Bhagavad Gita. Today, we will uh, have the classes back again. Classes will be back in October. And so we will uh, keep you posted and let you know and meanwhile, so many classes are there. Enjoy the reruns. And you can always, uh, you know, look, take a re-look at what it is. So brush up on your Sanskrit, enjoy the reruns, enjoy the summer. Yeah, so tomorrow no more classes. This was the last class for today. And then we will see you later. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamataya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om 